Hi, folks, and welcome to a more civilized age. Just the the, the short edition here. <clears throat> um, a lot of my hosts are gone on trips. Ryan is gone. Matthew is gone. Chris, we don't know because he was supposed to be here. But he's yeah. obviously busy with something important or else he would. And so I had to bring in Dylan. I'm kidding. Dylan was already uh, on this panel. <clears throat> Dylan, wait, were you the reason the other ones didn't show up? I don't know. Maybe. I thought I'm just the pinch hitter here. You call me when no one else can show up. Well, I, I know. I told you about this topic early. Yeah. <laughs> and then you added uh, one of our main topics we're going to talk about today. I so, didn't even mean to add that. It's just a thing I discovered happened. Yeah. So let's start with this one, folks. Uh, back in, was it April? Late April? It was. Yeah, it was, um, we found out on the 30th of April, and then it went until the 9th of May. Um, it was the Heart of the Jedi uh, reprint someone put up on Amazon that climbed as high as what, in the top 20? It it climbed as high as top 26 on Amazon Books. It maintained that for, I believe, 12 hours, about half a day. Bestsellers kind of, list. Yep, bestsellers. <clears throat> and and remained on was, the bestsellers list until it got taken down. And uh, it sold a lot of books for the price was nine ninety nine or something ten dollars. It, it was a yeah. It was about it was twelve dollars originally, and then it um got like two or three days in, it got like a dollar thirty nine discount. So it was a bit over ten bucks, and then yeah. that's what it was until the end. So practically ten bucks got you that. <clears throat> we got on here. We did several uh, videos on it. Even had uh, Eckhart's Ladder come join us about how important the book was and how you should get a copy <coughs> now okay um and then for people who did not listen to us or said oh i didn't have the money at the time you didn't have ten dollars you got bigger problems in or um, my personal favorite I, I i heard so many people say this oh i'll wait till the kindle version comes out <laughs> whatever excuses were given None were good. And then they complained because people started scalping them on eBay. But you know what? I didn't feel bad at all because <coughs> if, you, if you didn't get it at the beginning, then you have to pay scalpers prices. And I didn't, I didn't care about that. And it was selling what? Uh, hundreds of dollars at first on eBay. Yeah, there were three and five hundred dollars. I actually uh, tracked this because um, back in. Yeah. Check out our post in May. Dylan did a lot of posts tracking it day to day. And I actually have an ex, um, a Google Sheet, which I've been constant, continuously updating with the up-to-date on what it's selling for on eBay. And uh, I've been tracking it. So, yeah, it started like three full, three like the $500. And then it kind of calmed down and went to like the two to $300 range. And it's kind of dropped ever since. Um, it Technically speaking, it's now about the $100 range is what you can get a, a copy of of heart of the jedi the problem though that i've recently discovered and i should well, have seen this earlier <laughs> well before we get to that <coughs> again <clears throat> the natural order of things would have dropped this price anyway right because mm -hmm. as people are getting copies it's kind of it's kind of cooling off the excitement's cooling off and uh we knew the price would eventually go down however as dylan was making a Dylan was thinking about making an update on the channel for this month, right? No, no, no. I noticed that. <clears throat> so I noticed. Right. Um, so I'm not going to go over the article. Uh, a lot of stuff in the ar actual article. This is kind of a behind the scenes. Go watch. Go read the article uh, before you watch this. Um, yeah. Because I'm going to give a little bit behind the scenes and a little bit of new information that I found since it glows up. And but, the article on the expandeduniverse.com. Yes, it is Heart of the Jedi Buyers Beware. It's fairly recent. I put it up on Monday, I believe. Um, it kind of overshadowed the finale of EU by the numbers, but oh well, breaking news can do that sometimes. But yeah, right. I would, so originally I wanted to uh, track the numbers on what it was selling for on eBay because I saw these really high prices and people were quoting. And I thought to myself, that's just what they're asking for, not what it's buying, what people are actually buying it for. Right. So I wanted to track what people were actually buying it for to kind of just have like as a resource for anyone who missed out and wanted to buy a copy just so they weren't buying the four or five hundred dollar ones when you can buy it for two three hundred dollars it's still a lot of money obviously it's still probably way more 
uh, way more money than this is actually worth. But, you know, if you absolutely need to have it, because this is this is a piece of history, really. Oh, yeah. Uh, these copies. This was uh, we were talking about this um, before the podcast that the two weeks that we knew about this being up on Amazon when it was when it was absolutely killing it on the charts, destroying and passing everything was probably some of the most two exciting weeks in the eight years since the decanonization, at least when it comes to expanded universe. It's big news. Maybe not as big as 108. but Not yes, as big as say, 108, but an incredible. I would say, I would, I would say indeed it's big news. <clears throat> but, um, so yeah, I was updating this. I was updating these numbers, and um, uh, I mentioned to Chris that, hey, there's been over 120 people who have bought this book um, on eBay. And by my estimations, um, during the um, Amazon run, 4,400 were printed. So that's almost 3% of all people who have bought the Amazon uh, version have sold it on eBay. And I thought, that's kind of weird It because it, it seems like a number that was both high and low at the same time. Right. Because 120 is a lot, but two per, two and a half, like two, three percent is like, yeah, people being buying multiple <laughs> copies. I, I could see that. But then when I looked closely at it and I'm looking at the uh, numbers, you can go to um, do this by uh, just you just go to eBay. You type in Heart of the Jedi. And then in the tab on the left, you search uh, sold items. And that's how you can find it. And I noticed that there was a lot of sold listings that had the exact same picture for the book. And when I dug further into this, I noticed that it was all the same person selling them. And then when I looked closer at the picture, I noticed it wasn't the 2021 Amazon edition. It was the 2016 Lulu edition. I go into a bit in the article about how I figured it out, but you can just side by side tell tell the difference, right? right. Between the two. This is uh, this is the Lulu. This is the Amazon. Lulu, Amazon. Right. Yeah, let me, let me uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Here comes Chris. Hey. <clears throat> hey, Chris. Hey. How much uh, of that did you catch? <laughs> was, I'm sorry, Chris. He was just telling us about how he came across the yeah. bootleg copies of a bootleg edition of a book. Yeah, because here's the thing, yeah. right? Now, this you were, is... were going to show the, he's going to show the comparisons right now. And I'm going to, I'm going to blow up your screen here, Dylan, so you can just kind of show what, they're buying essentially the same book, but it is a 2015 copy, and you're going to show all the differences here. Kind of. And, well, yeah. Go go ahead. Yeah. So this is this is uh, the 2021 Amazon edition. This is the 2015 Lulu, 2016 Lulu. You'll notice uh, the Amazon one has gold banners um, on the top and bottom, which this one uh, this one doesn't. The author's name is in black in the Lulu one, where it's um, in gold on the uh, Amazon one, you can see the gold banding on the other side. The Amazon has the Bantam Spectra logo. And on the back, on the uh, Amazon one, it is the back cover art of Courtship of Princess Leia, whereas on the Lulu one, it is the cover art. Uh, it's not the cover art. It's Ralph McQuarrie art of Tatooine. But th here's the thing. When I check the numbers on it, um, that this guy, from what I've seen, because eBay only keeps um, data of sales for the last 90 days. So in the last 90 days, this seller had sold 20 copies of this version on eBay from the 2015, 2016 Lulu print. And it said in the description, this is a 2016 Lulu copy. But the problem is with that is that the Lulu copy was only available for a few days in the paperback there's no way someone had 20 copies and there's a 21st one that was up for listing it actually just sold for 61 dollars oh, sorry not 61 dollars uh 65 dollars so there's no way someone had been sitting on 21 copies of this lulu edition for five years and just now started selling them and again probably more because Amazon only has the last 90 days of data. And plus, we should mention those original Lulu copies did not stick around very long. Until, Just a couple of days. Until I messaged Chris about this and my findings, and Chris noticed that they're not the 2015-2016 uh, Lulus. Someone is using the files and making their own 
and is trying to sell them on eBay as uh, legitimate 2016 Lulus. And when you say getting the file, that is from StarWarsTimeline.net. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Which, which is it's available free for everyone, even the cover. Uh, Joe gave it out for free on his website. It's always it's always been for free on his website. Just someone grab that, grab the cover, <clears throat> design their own books. Maybe they're going through Amazon. I don't know, but they're going somewhere, some private publisher, ordering their own copies and then selling it on eBay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Chris, yeah, Chris, you know, since you were the first yeah. person I, I told about this, what were your reactions to all this as I was sending those like long chains of messages? I was, first of all, I was mad that you finally called me out. You discovered that I've been doing this this whole time. I'm kidding, but. Uh, That's hilarious. Yeah, I, I, I was conflicted because on the one hand, I, on the one hand, I, I couldn't feel too much outrage in one sense because, hey, we've all participated in Matt, which you ac accurately described as like an original bootleg, right? But again, yeah. there was sort of this sense in which it's got this quasi blessing of Flint himself, you know, mm -hmm. and it was sort of this neat moment in time back in 2016, 2015, 2016, and how cool it was for a new sort of generation of folks here in 2021 to be a part of this next wave. So on the one hand, I'm, I'm feeling like, well, great, like more people get access to this. But Dylan, I thought you made a really good point in the article, which I hadn't initially thought of, which is that one of the things that's so important, I think, for potential customers to understand is that half the fun of getting the physical copy, because again, we can't underscore enough, it's available for free on Joe's site forever and always, right? It's there. Yeah. You don't need to spend this exorbitant amount of money just to get access to the story. So the only people who would want to pay that exorbitant amount, as you pointed out, are people who want to kind of be a part of that moment, right? People who wanted to kind of either connect with that 2016 Lulu experience or this fun recent experience back in April. This guy is just taking advantage of people's, you know, just excitement over all that, right? But in reality, you're just getting something you could get for free. It's it's that's the saddest thing. Yeah, I, I joke with you, Matt. You know, back during all of the 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 drama back in April around how exciting this all was, and, and you asked me, do I have a hardcover edition from the Lulu era? And I said how much I lament I didn't grab one then. There wasn't time, right? Oh, it was and, really quick. Yeah. And I remember Scott or someone said, "Well, hey, you know, we can we can make a, our own sort of bootleg version of, a, of a, if we really want to of a hardcover one, right?" And I kind of said, "But it so wouldn't it was be the Scott same." This whole time, yeah, it's been be Scott this whole time. No, but the whole <laughs> thing is like, yeah, I could go make a hardcover. Always have been able to. I the thing is, I wanted one from that moment in time, right? There was mm -hmm. something special about it being from that that this period is, in the fandom, you know. Yeah, and, this is a this is a moment of history. This is a moment of our history. This right. Is a, and there's def I would say there's definitely a price to that more than the cost of printing the book, mm -hmm. but that's this person's like passing them off as as something that it's not. And not only that, because it would be one thing, right? Because um, when I first noticed it, uh, the couple I looked at, he had originally listed as um, for 19.99, which I don't think is a bad price if you're going to copy. If you're just going to print it out and sell it on eBay, because you figure it costs what ten bucks to make the thing. Probably five, four, five dollars to ship it, or ten to twelve to make it. Four to five dollars to ship it out, and then eBay takes a few dollars. At at nineteen ninety nine, you're pretty much breaking even. Maybe you're making like a dollar or so, but like that's just like, you know, the charge for like basically doing all the work for someone mm -hmm. else to print it, right? It, it's kind of a fair number, but he's putting that on auction, and again, listing them as like out of print, uh, tw uh, 2016 Lulu, almost guaranteeing that people are going to buy it for like 67, 70, 80. They're averaging those 21 listings have averaged over $90 per book is selling it. There's no way it's uh, costing this guy $90 to make these. No. And, my, you know, and Dylan, you also pointed out, I remember we were looking at this during our conversation we had offline earlier this week. You know, you noticed that, I mean, how, how lazy too. This guys using the same photo in every instance of this mm -hmm. of this yeah. item on eBay. It's the same photo, photo, same. It's the, yeah. It's the same, photo, same description. Yeah. I've actually been checking because the uh, the most recent one that was up, it actually at the time of recording this, it sold ninety minutes ago. So I've actually been refreshing his page to see if he tries to relist it again. Well, I, the really interesting thing is, you know, is he is he going to be watching this? Did he read yeah. the article? I mean, it would be it would be really weird if this person 
we're not somehow in this orbit, right? Um, but mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be interesting to sort of see what, what happens from here. But again, again, I don't want to be hypocritical. It's like, look, if someone put, as I just alluded, if someone put like a original hardcover from the Lulu era up on eBay for 300 bucks, I would join that bidding process, right? There's something yeah. special about, uh, so I'm not trying to be hypocritical. I just, as Dylan, as you, I thought so eloquently pointed out on the article, um, for anyone interested, in picking up another physical copy, just know what you're getting into, right? You know, know what you're picking up. You're picking up something that you could print out yourself at Kinko's right. for basically you for free. You can do what so. this guy was doing and sell paperback version. You can self publish that on any place, make it private, order from yourself. There's a lot of small companies that will do paperback. None of them will do hardback. So that's how you know a hardback won't, won't be made. Yeah. And the, and again, I said this in the article just because I don't want, I didn't include the the files to actually make it yourself. I know they're out there. I know where right. you can figure out where they're out there. But again, because I didn't want a copycat of like other people going, oh, I can make like 50, 60 bucks like per copy doing this and like kind of flooding eBay that way. Right. But if you absolutely yeah. want it, you can find the files. You can make it yourself for a lot cheaper than $90. And, and I laughed when Dylan told me this. <clears throat> I was like, wow making bootlegs of a bootleg yeah just to make some pro i mean that just shows you it shows you how hard up we are for expanding universe material as a fandom that that should really scream out to all those publishers out there uh, and, and i mean maybe they are taking notice and their hands are tied but uh it's I, crazy I like something you. something that's like watered down from something that's watered down it's kind of like season seven of the clone wars you know um it's just, it's just, so, no, but. Um, like like recording something on VHS and then making a copy of that VHS yeah. later on. You know, a good, a good tactic for anyone out there who, again, wants to be, you know, who, who wants this physical copy because they, they want to, you know, experience that feeling that the fandom had back in April. A good, a good tactic would be to write to this person or any person selling one on eBay and ask to see a, a screenshot or photo of mm -hmm. that last page which Amazon, you know, uh, you know, has something special in like, which, which actually says like, well, what date it was published, right? So that's something that's only. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm looking forward to my copy. Well, and it was a really interesting um, counter that I think a lot of folks had initially when the, the when the news first went out back in March, April, whenever it was about the, the second wave here. Um, people said, this is wrong. This is harming Flint, right? And right. we had to remind folks that, A, there was sort of this sense in which, you know, the, the 1516 version was sort of done with his sort of blessing. And that to some extent, this one we realize now is as well. He's super happy that it's out there and everything. But um, but again, the, we, we had to hammer the point home that it was being produced at cost, right? So right. really right. no one was, you know, Flint was happy. You know, we should all, we, everything's fine. It's, it's ethical. The real danger here is, gosh, um, this was such a win for us, given that there are other are done, completed, and out there floating around in the ether in the fandom. Uh, I, I would hate for this to spoil that, right? Like, if someone has a copy of Escape from Dagoo, and if Bill Ditz gives the wink, let's not make him think that, well, wait a minute, why am I going to get taken advantage of by some bootlegger, right? It's like, no, like, mm -hmm. let's give it to the fan as a public service. Let yeah. me have someone do it at cost, and then that's fine. Then everyone's better off. But yeah, so it's it's uh you know it's a it's a it's a problem, and I get it as a as a as a collector. There's a part of me that goes, "Hey man, great! I'm glad someone out there is like that. I don't care what the price is. This is so cool." But it's not the collector's item that people think it is. You know, yeah. It's just Plus, a that was Tennessee Flint's opinion of it's like I'm finally glad people are seeing yeah. this, and at least I mean I'm not profiting from it, but at least they get to experience it and appreciate it, and all these accolades have been poured on them. It's almost like, well, at least someone got to read it. And yeah. And well, more than someone, tens of thousands of someone's got to read it. <coughs> and, and that makes me happy. And it's just convincing Bill D. It's the same thing. Like, look, you have it. Just release it for free. Just let people, people just want to read it, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think so, too. But I do think it's funny, a copy of a copy. Now. <clears throat> Chris mentioned something. We're going to roll right into the second topic here. Uh, last month, I forgot to address the Wave 3 release. Dylan reminded me that that's not official wave yet. Wave 2. <laughs> well, we have Wave 2 about, out right now, and 3 is coming up. 
Yeah, and I was like, oh, we forgot to mention Wave 3. But it, it's not official yet, but we are pretty positive these are the books, correct? Yeah. Yeah, the the way that have been linked Elderweiss was correct. Um, also leaked waves one and two. They were completely correct with those two. So there's um, no reason to believe that um, they're incorrect here. <clears throat> and now those books again, Dylan, what are they? So uh, they're finishing up the Bane trilogy um, yes. with um, Dynasty of Evil. They are continuing the X-Wing series with Wedge's Gamble. And they are giving us uh, Kenobi, which was a new one we didn't know about, and Plagueis, which I actually believe was originally supposed. We had known about Plagueis for a yes. while, that it was going to be a part of Wave 3. It kept getting delayed for some reason, yeah. but we've known that they were making Plagueis. I mean, even if we did know they're making Plagueis, they're obviously going to make Plagueis. It's, yeah. it's often in the conversations of top like five best EU books of all time. So they were and those make are it. good choices across the board. All of them are excellent. <clears throat> Is... And, and, and Dylan's been doing a series on the expanduniverse.com uh, by the numbers about authors, ratings, you know, uh, from Amazon, from Goodreads, from what, Barnes & Noble, you said? Barnes & Noble, uh, Library Thing, and Annabee were the, uh, the five major okay. ones that I found. And, and, and so he's been kind of ranking things. Is Delray picking them from ratings? Or are they picking them from, I don't, I don't know. I mean, they would know how much many copies sell, but. How are they? How do you think they're choosing these books? I have no idea because they put Shatterpoint in Wave One. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, Chris, any idea? No, all you can do is speculate. And I, I thought that based on the the other decisions they had made, like Rogue Squadron, which it, to me is an obvious tie into this future movie they're doing called Rogue Squadron. Well, I we thought that, that last time, yeah. right? And and the fact that Kenobi's coming out again, a good book. But there's a Kenobi TV show coming, right? So there's obviously a lot of cross promotion. It made me think that there must have been a uh, Mace Windu uh, yeah. show on the horizon, but that doesn't seem to have uh, have thrown around the rumor mill. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that would make sense. Um, and then Darth Plagueis because it's a meme, and then th th the book okay. is also very well regarded within the. No, no, um, no. I agree with that. I'm just saying, if we're speculating, I mean, it's based off. Upcoming news and rumors and TV shows. It would have to be, I would almost assume it would be sales because when you look at Star Wars audiobooks, like just on a random day in the, the Amazon charts, Darth Plagueis is always the highest rated Legends audiobook out there, except when one of the new, um, except in the cases where we've had a new release of a Legends aud unabridged audiobook. Now, and like downtimes, it's almost always Darth Plagueis and Heir to the Empire are the two that are always up there. But Darth Plagueis is always, almost always higher than Heir to the Empire. I um I don't know off the top of my head um the sales figures for some of those books. Like I presume that Plagueis, for instance, did well. I mean, I think that this is not being cynical, but one of the things that you don't have to speculate very deeply to sort of believe is that most of what they're doing, what any industry would do, would be to put out in these early waves the things that they know are gonna make money. Like they're not this is not a place to gamble, which is why Heir to the Empire is an obvious choice in some sense, right? Because it's like there's going to be the, the nostalgia factor, the collector factor. It's going to feel like an on-ramp to new fans and right. stuff. So on the one, you know, Plagueis, Kenobi, these are books that probably sold fairly well. That's, again, what was so striking about Shatterpoint. It made me think, gee, did it sell better than I remember? I, I, I've got other reasons for thinking it was probably picked as well. I mean, look, I mean, Samuel Jackson's popular, the random person walking past the stand at Target where I've seen these books for sale is probably, you know, there's, but, um, uh, but that, that made me wonder, do, is there, is there something stronger about that book in the market than even I really appreciated? But, uh, but again, I, I wouldn't be surprised if down the road we see something with Mace Windu. Yeah. I would actually I expect to, this. I, the other thing too about Plagueis and Kenobi and a few of these things is I'm, I'm surprised they've done as many of the trilogies so far as they've done, like with the, the old Republic and, and the air stuff that's, that's taking up a lot of space in these waves. But Plagueis, Kenobi, I think they're going to see a lot more one-offs. It's a lot easier for them to push that out, right? So anyway. Obvious. Well, well, I mean, but Rogue Squadron, that's a four-book series. I, I, have to, <laughs> I have to say, I, I've been... Even longer if they continue to go with it. Well, I have to say, I, I, in a video a while back, I, I was speculating about this and, and thought that, um, very cynically in this case, that I thought this was it. Um, this would be the only one they would do precisely because it was such an obvious tie into the film, which yeah. was all the weirder why they then resubtitled it. Right. And I'm like, what, so who knows, who knows how far they're going to go. And so to me, this means I have now no idea whether they're going to, are they going to like, are they going to do like betrayal 
and the rest of legacy or just one i mean who knows now i think really it's uh, anything's up for grabs uh i will say there's a couple that i don't think they will ever do unfortunately but we can maybe get to that that later okay and uh l let me ask this so we're getting <clears throat> speaking of audiobooks we're getting an unabridged version of rose squadron yes we're and, uh, that is already out and, and we can assume that wedges gamble will also be unabridged Yes, they, they haven't confirmed this yet, but of the four books in Wave right. 3, only Wedge's Gamble doesn't already have an unabridged audiobook, so if they keep to the trend of releasing an unabridged audiobook with them, it would have to be Wedge's Gamble, unless they for some reason decided to redo one of the other ones, but they're all fairly recent, because um, Dynasty of Evil was 2010, I believe, and uh, Plagueis was 2012, and Kenobi was 2013, which... I guess it's almost over 10 years ago, well, but in an expanded universe sense that, that those were very late releases. But, but again, what I'm getting at, uh, that these, <clears throat> that the audiobooks, books, unabridged audio books are a win for mm -hmm. fans because mm -hmm. I, I'm not particular on audiobooks, but a lot of people are, that is the big thing. If you hear people say, yeah, I read books. It's that they listen to audiobooks, really. And that's, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, judging anyone. I think that's great. But that there's not an unabridged version of some of these earlier books is frustrating. <clears throat> I mean, I tried to get into it. In fact, it was uh, X-Wing Rogue Squadron. I tried to get into it, uh, audiobooks, a long time ago <clears throat> and then realized very quickly they were skipping scenes. And I was shocked. What, what's going on? And I thought I was missing a tape or something. And the guy told me, he's like, no, it's abridged. He went, so they, they cut out parts to make it quicker. I said, I don't want to listen to these. I mean, I was enjoying it because the music. The sound effects, you know, they're they're done fun. But I was like, I don't want to listen to an abbreviated version. I want to listen to the whole thing. And uh, they didn't start that until later on. But they never went back and redid those unabridged versions. So that we're getting those now, that is a win for EU fans. I want to address one more thing. <clears throat> um, if these waves keep coming out, like we're going to assume they will. I mean, there's going to be a wave four, wave five, who knows how many. We have to also assume that they're 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 kind of successful. I would say. Yeah, I I wasn't able to track the second wave because I was um, far too busy to be um, updating and screen um, and archiving Amazon pages every four hours. Right. Um, but I do know wave one sold fairly well for a few days. Um, um, definitely overperformed for at least a week and then kind of tailored off again. So they they're definitely doing well at least in the early stages of these. Right. So, I mean, they got to have some success there, which is nice. I, I just hope that some kid looks it up, doesn't know what Essential Legends means, starts reading it going, this is awesome. Wait a minute, it doesn't tie into the new stuff. And then eventually find the rest of this universe. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it could be contributing to, I, I don't really like some of the covers or like, like Chris and I, we discussed Essential Legends and what we thought about it. But at the same time, if it's successful, it may be introducing more people into this canon yep. instead of the new canon and it's, it may be a it may be a cry for help from delray who just needs to sell books and they know they've lost that core audience they had for so long and maybe if we do something else i mean even even unabridged audiobooks they've got to be seeing bumps in that sure yeah it's been a long time since you've seen an eu book like in target like i mentioned which these essential legends now books are being sold at least in my area so that's a cool thing, you know, and they definitely stand out. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully they bring more people in. And by the way, they cost more to make because they're bigger. They're the new, they're the new trade, but they, but they, um, but they're priced higher too. So I think volume, volume, volume. I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if you know, if they're selling less, they're, they're marginally right. making more. So they're, 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 they must be making a splash, you know, um, to, to continue just, it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And just <laughs> anecdotally, the number of EU fans and, and collectors I've seen, who obviously already have a copy of Heir to the Empire in multiple forms. Well, stuff up as well. Make a new so, one every five still, years. It would yeah. have been nice, and it would have sold like wildfire <clears throat> if they could have asked each one of these authors yeah. to contribute just a short story <clears throat> at the beginning or at the end of the book, like they used to in a lot of the other reprints. Yeah. If they could have just had them do that, these would have been, to be honest, they would have been New York Times bestsellers. I'll, I'll yeah. even go that far. You know, say that. Uh, I, yeah, I'll go even further. I mean, I, I, this many years after the decanonization discontinuation, I'm just now, I'm I'm now so starving for any sort of good news, right? That like, 
if yeah if there had been one new one page long update to shatterpoint by stover i'm done it's all i wanted i no right. longer care about new legends right you know what i mean <laughs> huge missed opportunity huge missed opportunity because by the way I've, I've talked about how look maybe someday i'll go out and get them i've wanted i've wanted new fans to go pick this up up first Guess what? Me, the hard, you know, big collector guy. I don't have these things yet. They're cool. I'm glad they're out there. I hope they attract attention. There still isn't a lot for me to go after. Again, I, yeah. I, I very <clears throat> hard to be enthused by my 19th copy of Heir to the Empire. So, but like, let's say Dynasty of Evil has a Drew Carpenter short story oh. afterwards that's yeah. just about Darth Zana. For uh, yeah. you know, it's it's sold. It's sold the day it comes yeah. out. I buy it. Absolutely, absolutely. No, no questions asked. And it's just but, a short story. You know, and we are, we're always talking like throw us a bone. I mean, the keychain size bone that they that they would be thrown, that's all they'd have to do. Yeah. Two pages, three pages, an overview, synopsis, a link to Drew's website saying this is the official continuation, you know, anything, <laughs> nothing. Instead, the only thing new we got are new covers, which, <laughs> again, no one's clamoring for. And and again, I but I will say, the thing that does often get buried is the unabridged audio, which is in some sense new, and that's very cool. But th th missed opportunity. No, you know, can't say it enough, right? So, Yeah, we've, we've said that before. So, yeah, but I agree. Um, now, Wave 4, we're imagining will, there will be one. <clears throat> Obviously, is it the Bakta War? Is that the third one? <coughs> in the Rogue Squadron series? Uh, I think it's Kratos trap, trap, then then back, back to war. Is yep. it Kratos trap? Yep, Kratos trap, then back to okay. war. Okay. So obviously that's going to be one. Okay. What other ones do you think they'll do? What do you hope they'll do? Or what do you think, like Chris said, what do you think they'll never do? So well, let, go ahead, Dylan. I have an idea for both. Well, obviously right. they're going to make co they're going to make older public revenue at some point, especially with the <laughs> remake getting announced. That's an that's a very easy. That's a great back. pick. That one is yeah. one that they're doing. I yep. guarantee. I don't know yep. if it's wave. I don't know if this is next wave, but they are going to have that out sometime. Pretty it's soon. wave four. I guarantee you, that's a good pick. I didn't even think about that. Um, what else? I think. What do they, you think they're never going to do that they should? I think they'll never do Republic Commando. I think it contradicts far too much with the what the new canon is doing, and I think the with little, Bad Batch out, I wouldn't count out Republic Commando, but I hear what you're saying. And also the, uh, the issues that the falling out that they had with the author, I think, yeah. is also gonna. Uh, <clears throat> That's true too. That's true too. Did I steal okay. yours, Chris? No, but I well, sort of, sort of, but I, I totally agree with your picks. I'm looking for mine because I, I wrote some down like two months ago when this topic first came up and I can't find them now. But I mean, to your point about Republic Commando, I think anything, unfortunately, from the Clone Wars era is out, right? Because it's it's just too confusing. It's just too mm -hmm. confusing, right? Yeah, they'll never it, do MedStar because Barra Sofri is a completely different character than she is in TCW. No, I'm 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 sad I'm sad to say I believe that nothing from any Clone Wars era the early multimedia era or the Filoni tie-in stuff, you know, or anything in between nothing, Karen Travis. And again, but partially for the reasons you mentioned partially too, it's like, it's confusing enough inside the EU, let alone this brand confusion, trying to introduce new Canon fans, the old stuff. It's just, it's just not worth going there, but. Does an outbound flight or a shadows of the empire. So shadows of the empire is something I definitely, I think is a, uh, is on the short list for a couple of reasons. It's still fairly iconic to a certain generation of Star right. Wars fans and it's a one-off, right? And I think they're gonna, there's gonna be this, I think kind of this proportion of continue some trilogies and series and then sprinkle in some one-offs, right? So I sort of think in terms of trilogies, I would be shocked if at some point, given the partially renewed interest in like Lando from the solo movie, right? If there's a, so, did they do the, uh, the, uh, the, the Smith? uh and the daily trilogies possibly Ooh. um i think that shadows is an obvious choice i think that um so is splinters of the mind's eye because it's it's so kind of weird and different right that there is no brand confusion right at the same time think about it they put a quote from feloni on the back this was my favorite yeah. cover right you know when i yeah. spent three minutes thinking about star wars before i got hired in 2008 <laughs> you know so 
Um, I think that, um, but so, and I, I wish I had my list here, but there's a few things like that where I think that um, uh, where they were probably, here's the thing they'll never do. And this is what's just so sad. Oh, by the way, here's my, here's my crazy hope, my crazy hope. And I know it's not realistic. Yoda dot right. Well, no, I, I mean, that would be cool, but they no, might do that. Maybe. Um, is that um, what they would do is under the guise of this being essential EU reads, right? Not essential books, but essential <clears throat> EU reads. They would do a book that's just an anthology of some short stories, like existing short stories. You know, maybe all the little short <laughs> stories that appeared in paperbacks and stuff, right? I don't know, just an idea, just a, just a different cool. sort of take on. <clears throat> or like the, a Tales of the New Republic. Well, the best of, um, was it Tales of the, no, Tales of the Empire was the best of right. uh, uh, Adventure Journal. Right. No. And so like, I know it wouldn't be new stuff, but it's just like, right. Hey, why not, why not mix it up? Doesn't all have to be books. Right. You know, no, but uh, the thing that they'll never do that they should, if we're being intellectually honest about essential EU books, the thing that they have to reprint, but never will for, I think of our, are the prequel trilogy novels. Um, you know, revenge of the Sith is an essential legends read, mm -hmm. right. but but given given the utter confusion, I think that the new canon fan would have about, oh, yeah, this is the novelization. Wait a minute, why is this stuff here? This contradict, blah blah blah. You know, so those books are those books are EU. But trying to explain that to an average fan is is impossible, right? So, right. but that would be that to me would would tell me that yeah, Del Rey is in the driver's seat. That they're going to Lucas saying these are three books in our catalog that are essential, and <laughs> every single EU fan knows it. And says it and preaches if it. If I was Delray, I'd be pounding my fist down, going, "Look, we just want a short story. We're yeah. just just included in these special editions. That's all we're asking for." <clears throat> and I, I really think that what if if, if um, these uh, what are they called? The uh, people who get the license is it licensees? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, licensees really need to go to Lucasfilm and say, "Hey, look, you're killing us. You're strangling us here." You're, 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 you got a stranglehold of what we can and can't do. Let us do this. Yeah. Or we're going to have to renegotiate this contract because Star Wars ain't selling like it used to. <clears throat> and you're not coming out with movies. You're doing, you're focusing on TV a lot. And we're thinking that unless you let us do more, loosen up these reins. Because if Del Rey had the opportunity and they had the permission, I have no doubt we'd have new legend stories. I have no doubt. I always, I always think of that thing that uh, you know the the now infamous audio from the panel uh, with uh, Zahn and Alston when they're asked about his reboots. You know, is that ever even possible, right? And what's the thing? There's there's one line that I I think once a week at the minimum I hear in my head in Zahn's voice. Delroy wouldn't want that. Yeah, and what does he say specifically? He goes, "The publishing industry has taken enough of a hit as it is." Yeah, and. And then, whoops! It got another big hit. But you know, to your point, Matt. Again, it's just like how how much it, how, how much more struggle are they going to have to endure? It's right? funny right because the the that Zon bristles at that. It was like no, like no, doesn't even entertain it or anything. He says no, that would be a terrible idea. Is what he says. <clears throat> I mean, just shoots it down and just talks about how. And you're right, the, how the publishing industry suffers it either way, and that would be huge, detrimental to their fan base. <clears throat> to their sales. And I think people like Delroy say, hey, you're not the game anymore. There's tons of other franchises out there that are more vibrant, more hip, more out there, connected to younger fans. <clears throat> Star Wars isn't the only game in town anymore, like it used to be. Like it used to be. And they say, you need to let us have more creativity in what stories we can and can't write. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they don't. Obviously, the group, the story group, cares zero about uh, continuity. They've said as much. They've said as much. So they should just say, "What's the point now?" Yeah. What's the point? One other. If thing. We should be able to do anything now. If you don't care, then why should we? One other thing about essential legends. When we're talking about things that'll never get printed, which I think. I don't know if anyone has actually openly stated, but I think we all have this. Crystal CD Star. Station. I know. Matt, the Geeks Addict was going to tell me, ask, ask for that one. but I get this feeling that 
the this essential legends collection is not a long term project. I think it's going to be. I, I don't know. I don't. I hope it's not. But I just get this feeling that there's not going to be an infinite number. Like they're not going to do everything, and that they're well, not yeah. going to reprint these books forever. I don't so think, I think they're going to print everything. I agree with that. So I think when it comes to like things that should get printed, if it's the essential legends, is New Jedi Order, Legacy of the Force, Fate of the Jedi. Those series are just too long to reprint. Yeah, I think. And, and, and that's the thing. That's that's what's so weird, though, about Rogue Squadron. It's like, are we going to do all 11 related books? You know, that would that would that would feel weird. Right. Again, like if you're going to go the distance, why that? Except, you know, but but if Rogue Squadron becomes a hit show, then yeah. why not? I think it's interesting to think about this, too, from the perspective of, again, of the story group, who, again, is like pretty, pretty iffy on continuity now. Right. But to the extent they want to keep up appearances. In the broad strokes, almost all the picks so far, again, broad strokes, they could argue you could shoehorn in, right? Oh, well, you know, you got the you got the Thrawn stuff. He's a character now in the new, you know, oh, Rogue Squadron, sure, there's some con but you know, yeah, we we have we still have a bunch of guys who fly around in in X Wings and stuff, right? Kenobi, oh yeah, yeah, sure. There's it's what we're gonna do is kind of like that. Yeah, he's back on tattoo, you know what I mean? So I think they're gonna that's kind of they're gonna keep things kind of confined to that kind of air you know but but no they'll they'll never do something as as obvious as that right so and it's a shame because you're right at some point there's an end game and people a generation from now look back and be like well this is the essential this is just the thing i need to get i can't get all 170 all. yeah and it's so yeah. weird it's like of all the clone wars things shatterpoint and matt you know i love that book but of all the things wouldn't be the one i'd pick there are probably yeah. better books stronger books that, out of all of these that's been the biggest why for me yeah mm -hmm. the rest of them it's, I can see it's not a bad way like, okay either. yeah you make that you do this i see rhyme or reason reason to every book they picked except for shower point and that was one of the first wave too mm -hmm. but you could be right they could have thought oh there's gonna be there's big rumors about samuel jackson coming back for his own tv show yeah so let's go ahead and get ahead of this it helps i mean <laughs> this I, I i hope this doesn't get misinterpreted but like i'm just thinking about it from uh marketing um it, it helps that this new wave of Star Wars books actually has a person of color for once, you know, like, and particularly because it came out in February during Black History Month. Like, I mean, I'm not being like, I'm putting on my marketing hat. I, I, that, I, I guarantee that's part of the thinking of, of everyone now in our society, right? You've got to, you've got to be worried about that. So that's, you know, so unfortunately, Shatterpoint is the token pick in that wave. Perhaps. Um, yeah. The Lander Carician trilogy would have been better. It would have been a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Would have been better. Right. Yeah. <coughs> oh my goodness. All right. So um we'll stop it there. That's that's good enough. We we have another topic. We've had it for like two months on the list. I keep kicking the can down the road. I'll explain why. <clears throat> Perhaps next month we can talk about it. But um this is pretty good. Uh anything else to add about wave wave three, wave four? Obviously, Crystal Star will never happen, and I think that in general, yeah. most most of the Bantam stuff is just off the table, with the exception yeah. of Shadow or um the, or the Rogue Squadron series. No, uh, with uh, with the possibility oh, of the Empire. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I doubt something like Kevin Janderson's uh, Jedi Academy trilogy gets the gets the uh, pick or uh, any of those one offs. A a, a, a a dark horse. The only dark horse pick would be Truce of Akura. But I think it it it's too sort of superficially um, would be too confused with uh, whatever what's his face Wendig stuff, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so exactly, I agree with that. All right, <coughs> so there you have it, folks. Let us know in the in the comments. What do you think about the bootleg of a bootleg of a book? What do you think about Wave Three? What do you think is going to happen in Wave Four? And uh, Chris, are you getting your channel back, or is it back? And I just haven't noticed. Um, it's you know, Kathleen Kennedy is still okay. Is still so it's not back. back yet, folks. No, mm -hmm. it's not back yet. But if this video gets a hundred likes, it still won't come back. That's right. That's All right. right. <laughs> we'll if it's not back, 